Good evening, everybody, and welcome into this week's edition of the Milford Informer. As always, I am your host, Tim Coet. The weekend has arrived, and once again, we welcome you to check out the latest news and sports items from around the Milford community. Let's get things started by showing you tonight's top stories rundown. Tonight, we'll provide a full update on the results and final vote totals from this past Tuesday's special town election. Also tonight, Milford TV member Malcolm Zale and Milford TV intern Jake Rui put their own unique spin on this year's Milford Regional Auxiliary's Taste of the Towns. And later tonight, Dr. McIntyre returns to Milford TV to bring you the first installment of his superintendent updates for the new school year. Of course, we lead off the program tonight with an update on the future of recreational marijuana in Milford. Finally, after months of heated debate, last minute changes to the ballot, and a weekend where tensions rose around the community, voters went to the polls this past Tuesday to make their voices heard. When all was said and done, Milford experienced one of their largest voter turnouts in years for a municipal election. According to the town clerk's office, a total of 5,378 voters cast their ballot in the town's special election. That's just a shade under 30% of all registered voters. By now, you surely know the final results. The town of Milford voted in favor of a ban not only for retail shops, but also bans in the testing, manufacturing, and cultivation of recreational marijuana products within the town. The final vote tally was as follows. A total of 3,027 votes went in favor of the ban versus 2,351 that voted against, allowing the ban to pass by a margin of 56.3% to 43.7%. Taking a look at how things broke down by precinct, you will see that voters in six of Milford's eight precincts did vote in favor of the ban. Precincts one and four were the only areas that supported a no vote. Precinct 7 saw one of the largest turnouts and also saw the highest percentage of yes votes of any precinct, with 66% of voters supporting the ban. Reacting to the ballot results, Milford Cares Chairwoman Donna Nero said, This is very positive, and I think that's what the voters had in mind, protecting the health of their children, keeping Milford a safe community to live in, and protecting Milford's image. On the other side, Milford Citizens for Fairness, who spearheaded the effort on the no side, released a statement saying, quote, We are disappointed by the outcome of the referendum and continue to be concerned about whether it accurately reflects the will of the residents of Milford, who strongly supported legalization of recreational marijuana in last fall's high turnout election. The group behind this ballot did everything they could to quickly and quietly push this vote through, and the process was never fair or transparent. That is bad government, and it is bad for Milford. With the public voting in favor of the ban, the next step in the process will take place at next month's town meeting, where members will need to vote on the zoning bylaw that would officially put the marijuana ban in place. We will certainly follow up on the results of that town meeting vote next month. And now on to our next top story. Once again, the Milford Regional Medical Center Auxiliary delighted local residents with their annual Taste of the Towns event, which took place at the Portuguese Club last week. To put their own unique spin on the event, here is Milford TV roving reporter Malcolm Zale and Milford TV intern Jake Rui. Okay, so the event hasn't started yet, and they're keeping everyone in the lobby. So through the powers of time travel, what we're going to do is we're going to wait here and we're going to come back to you when they open the doors. Time traveling in, I wanted you to get ready for it because it's kind of an intense process. Time traveling in three, two, one, whoa, you guys okay? All right, cool, all right, cool. I know time travel can be pretty rough, so just like collect yourself. All right, they've opened the doors, let's go in. So right now we're, uh, we're in line to get inside the Taste of the Towns. It looks like it's a pretty well populated event. Milford really comes out strong, the Portuguese club as always. It really shows just the, uh, the strong sense of community and uh, family in Milford. And I think that's, that's really powerful and it's really sweet. Hi, we don't have tickets, but we're with Milford TV. Uh, we didn't have tickets, but uh, me and Jake, we crawled through the air ducts and we got in all right. Don't worry, don't tell anyone. It's kind of some spy stuff. 
It's pretty cool. What is your role here at the event tonight? First of all, I'm president of the auxiliary, and I'm also in charge of this whole event tonight. And uh, what is this event? I know it's Taste of the Towns, but like, what is it for? What is it supporting? What is it all about? Every year, it's a different theme. We raise money to help with the hospital. We have done all kinds of things for diabetes, wheelchairs, behavioral health rooms, different things. This year, the money is all going towards new furniture and the entrance to the hospital. Awesome. And can you tell me something about like the vendors that are all out here tonight? Like, what, what are we looking at? What are we looking at for events and funness? Well, we have a lot of things going on. We have a 50-50 raffle. We have a $5 raffle where everything is over $200. And then all of these baskets behind us have been donated by town people. And each basket is worth about $100. All the restaurants, they come, they bring their food. We have scallops, we have prime rib, we have all kinds of desserts, all kinds of food here for everybody to go and sample. And one final question. Yes. It's a really hard one. Who is your favorite Milford celebrity? Milford favorite celebrity? Probably El Correa. Ooh, that's a good one. I think I like him too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, it's been a pleasure. You. And can you tell me about what you're doing here, what this event's all about tonight? Well, I'm president and owner of Bright Star Care. I'm also the chair of the Milford Regional Healthcare Foundation Board of Directors, a board of trustees, uh, which is the organization that this supports, the auxiliaries activity support. And I'm also here as the DJ and MC tonight, so trying to support the folks who are supporting the hospital. Who is your favorite Milford celebrity? My favorite Milford celebrity, am I going to be on record with saying this? That, that depends on your answer. Okay, well, you can't really tell anybody, but... Absolutely. This is just between us, right? You know it. Okay, because I could get in trouble with this. Of course. Okay. Dick Ferrucci. What a scandal. Uh, what scandal? I know, what scandal. He also, I've been involved with the Chamber as well, okay. and he does the auction for the Chamber, which will be here in a couple months as well. I'm uh, with Alicante Restaurant and uh, we got uh, some dessert, some uh, short ribbed uh, sliders, uh, you know, let people try it out. We've been open for 15 years, so everybody knows very well what Alicante is in the stands for already. Is this your first time doing Taste of the Towns? Or no, are you guys we've done this for the last 15 years now, so. Awesome. Can you Every tell year. me a little bit about your experience doing it as a uh, repeat offender? Uh, well, it's great, and there's always a great turnout, so it's wonderful to see how many people support, you know, every cause. It's wonderful to see that. Awesome. And one final question. Who is your favorite Milford celebrity? That would be myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Know, you I think my favorite celebrity in Milford would be Josh Leoch. Ooh, that's a good choice. I like this. All right. I'm not going to have to ask you to say and spell your name because I think they know you back at the station. But do you want to tell me a little bit about the event tonight? Like what's the going on? The event is fantastic because when you think about all these restaurants coming together to help the Milford Hospital and the projects that the Ladies Auxiliary supply, you can't ask for better and they get some good advertising out of it. Absolutely. What's the general like crowd atmosphere been like tonight so far? Oh, it's look at it. It's all Milford. It's all the physicians. It's everybody getting together who wants to help it, the hospital. It really is remarkable how Milford comes together like such a tight community. When, That's what Milford's about. Down. It really is. All right. That's why it's the center of the universe. Now, I have kind of a contradictory question for you. We've been asking people who their favorite local celebrity is from Milford, and you're actually in the lead right now. No. So I have to ask you, who is your favorite Milford celebrity? My favorite celebrity is this guy right here. <laughs> We don't have celebrities in Milford. We don't have celebrities. We just have people that are more We have 28,000 celebrities that all get together and make Milford the most special place in the world. And six of them watch your show. And six of them watch the show. Rumor is we're almost up to seven. Almost there, guys. Come on. Keep the follower count up. Representing Cornerstone at Milford. Awesome. And uh, what is Cornerstone? Cornerstone at Milford is an assisted living. Okay. It's right on Birch Street, right off uh, right off 495. And what is it that you're doing? Because it looks like the most like intense technical <laughs> thing. <laughs> no, really right cool. now I'm just carving some roast prime rib. What is this? This is a. It looks lamp. like a mood light. Yeah, it's a it's a heat lamp. It keeps it from cooling down too much. Ooh, thank you. Are you Milford local? Do you? Yes, we are. All right, I have a question for you then. Who is your favorite Milford celebrity? Um, favorite Milford celebrity. 
Probably Dick uh, Frucci. Good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. All right, a good thanks. guy. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Very have nice a, to meet you. Have a lovely night. Have come fun on, with your... Come on back and have a little later. Absolutely. Thank you. Can you introduce this little guy? This is Chase. Can you say hi, Chase? Say hi. Say hi. All right. He's a little shy right now. Could you? <laughs> what's been the general vibe of this event? Like, what do you think it says about Milford? I think this is one of the best events we have here. Um, <laughs> it really brings the community together and lets you taste all different local restaurants and really helps support the local community. I'm here with my grandmother, my father, and my son. So we have four generations of Milfordians. Um, my dad was born in Milford Hospital and Chase was too. So That's like adorable, first of all. And I have one final question. Who is your favorite? <laughs> Do you really want this, huh? Who, here, have this for me. Who is your favorite Milford celebrity? Uh, Batman, of course. I am touched and my heart is warm. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. 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 <gasps> If there is a god, it is this man, and he made this apple pie. Can you guys please tell me about what appears to be the greatest thing on the planet? <laughs> well, right here we have some gluten-free pumpkin muffins. We have mini apple pies, and we also have homemade chocolate eclairs. What is your restaurant? Where are you guys located at? Tell me all that good stuff. Um, we are Rhapsody's Victorian Coffee House. We are located at 395 East Central Street in Franklin, Massachusetts. Um, we are a crepery, a bakery, and we also do high-end coffee. So if you're looking for an espresso, an Americano, iced latte, um, we do sweet and savory crepes. We have a full menu online. You can check out our website. Um, other than that, all our pastries are from scratch, made in-house. We also have a cold brew machine where we have a special one where it was a $600 machine and uh, it takes 12 hours and it drips one drop per second and it uh, actually reduces the acidity in the coffee so if anyone who has any problems with stomach problems when they drink coffee, come and try our cold brew and you'll have no problems, I promise that. Thank you guys so much, have a lovely night. And with that, we bid a taste of the towns, adieu for the night, a good close to a wonderful event. It goes to show you how wonderful the community of Milford is, how much the community comes together, especially to support such a good cause like the hospital. Thank you so much to the Milford Auxiliary ladies. They do a wonderful job with this event. It's just so admirable, all the work they do, and you can't thank them enough. I've been Malcolm Zale. My cameraman's been Jacob Rui. Thank you guys so much. Have a lovely night. Next up, we have news from the Milford school system. With the new school year now in full swing, we're excited to have Dr. McIntyre joining us for a new season of superintendent updates. For this month, Dr. McIntyre discusses the strategic plan within the school system for the upcoming year. Hello Hawk Nation and welcome to the first superintendent update of the 2017-2018 school year. For the first update I want to speak to you about the new Milford Public Schools strategic plan. We are in the learning and growth business so we wanted to focus our strategic approaches around learning and growth. Our focus areas are growth focused instruction, social emotional learning, equity and access, and continuous learning. We chose growth focused instruction because of the centrality of the classroom and want to emphasize student engagement, setting high expectations for all students, and really focus on the outcomes of learning. We also want to continue to build a warm, welcoming, and supportive school culture. So we are focusing on social emotional learning for both students and faculty. Equity and access is not only a focus, but a core value for the Milford Public Schools. We want to ensure inclusive practices and access to the most rigorous courses for all of our students. Our last area is continuous learning, and we want to recognize that every community member is a learner, and we value constant learning for every member of the school community. Thank you for joining me, and have a great month, Hawk Nation.
As we mentioned on last week's show, Franklin High School was unable to use their home field to host Milford in week two, so the game ended up shifting to Milford High School. That gave us the opportunity to provide full game coverage of this great Hockamock League rivalry. Let's take a look at how this week two game unfolded in the highlights between Milford and Franklin. It happened a full two weeks earlier than anticipated, but the Milford football team was able to enjoy their first regular season game under the lights of their home field in week two. The Franklin Panthers came to Milford technically serving as the home team, but the home field advantage was clearly on the side of the Scarlet Hawks as this Davenport versus Kelly Rex matchup got underway. Once the game began, however, the Panthers offense was ready to silence the Milford crowd. On the first play from scrimmage, junior running back Sean Hofferty would work his way up the far sideline for a quick gain of 11 to get the drive jump started. From there, Franklin QB Jake Noviello would establish a connection with sophomore receiver Jack Nally. Here Nally is able to turn the short reception into a 28-yard gain. A few plays later, he keeps the Panthers' drive alive with a crucial catch on fourth down. And then finally, Noviello would cap off the drive with an eight-yard strike up the middle where he'd find the underclassmen in the end zone to give Franklin the first points of the night. After deferring to the second half on the coin toss and then watching that opening drive score for Franklin, the Hawks would be ready to respond immediately on the ensuing kickoff. Zuko's kick rolls to a stop just outside the 10-yard line. Now good speed back up the middle of the feed field for Milford now to the near sideline and breaking away from the special teams unit and unable to keep his feet. Going out of bounds inside the Franklin 20. And that was Chappelle Feaster with his electric speed quickly accelerating. The 66 yard return by junior Chappelle Feaster set up starting field position for the Hawks at the Franklin 20. Six running plays later, junior Brendan White, along with a little help from the Milford offensive line, would jam the ball into the end zone and a Sean Lahane extra point would tie the game up at seven. With another kickoff looming, the Milford special teams was ready to make another key play. As this kick will roll its way just shy of the goal line and Franklin now trying to take it back up the middle. The ball is loose and it looks like Milford falls on it. The ball stripped as the return man took it up through the pile and Franklin pays the price as the Scarlet Hawks come away with the football. It was Neil Arquilano this time with the big play on special teams, and for the second straight possession, Milford would start inside Panther territory, this time at the 16. After Will Pointer got the Hawks down to the two, for a moment it appeared that Ryan Pearl was able to get the ball across the goal line on the keeper, but a holding call would wipe the touchdown off the boards. Ultimately, Milford would settle for a field goal try, where Sean Lahane would deliver the ball through the uprights from 20 yards out, giving the Scarlet Hawks a 10-7 lead late in the first quarter. Both defenses would settle the game down during the second quarter, and as halftime arrived, the score would remain 10-7 in favor of Milford. The Hawks would have the football to lead off the third quarter, hoping to gain separation from Franklin as they did in their victory over the Panthers in 2016. Milford looked to be in business after a Franklin penalty brought the Hawks close to midfield, but the drive would stall, forcing Milford to punt. After a series of costly drops limited the Panthers' offense in the first half, the receiving core was much more sure-handed on the ensuing Franklin possession. Noviello would use three different targets to march his team down the field before junior Evan Wendell would make this catch in the back corner of the end zone, allowing the Panthers to retake the lead. That score gave Franklin new life on both sides of the ball. On defense, the Panthers refused to give the Hawks' run-heavy offense any breathing room. They would also start to capitalize on a series of Milford mistakes. On this Brendan White carry, Franklin would get the strip, and they'd return the ball all the way inside the Milford 10-yard line. Noviello would make the turnover hurt with a quick strike to Ryan Driscoll, leading to a 21-10 Franklin advantage. With the deficit mounting, Milford would bring in sophomore quarterback Colby Pyers to try and open up the passing game. But Franklin's defense refused to give the underclassmen any time in the pocket, and that pressure would lead to a pair of interceptions, the second of which the Panthers would turn into points with a Sean Hofferty rushing touchdown. In the end, Franklin would make it feel like a home game after all, scoring 21 unanswered points en route to a 28-10 Week 2 victory. Another tough early season loss for the Scarlet Hawks. 
Now at 0-2 on the young season, Milford enters a crucial point in their schedule as they face their first Davenport division opponent of the season in Week 3. The team travels to Canton to take on the Bulldogs tonight before returning to Milford for their first official home game on September 29th versus North Attleboro. We are efforting to get footage of tonight's game from our friends over at Canton Community TV, so look for highlights from tonight's game here on The Informer next week. Meanwhile, we did have a chance to see Milford and Canton clash on the soccer pitch this week. The Lady Hawks soccer team has started to get their season rolling in the right direction, and they hope to keep that momentum going against a team that's finished toward the top of the Davenport standings the previous two seasons. Let's check out highlights of this week's girls' soccer matchup between Milford and Canton. After falling to 0-2 on the season, the Milford girls responded with back-to-back -back victories over Taunton and Stoughton. Could the girls make it three in a row as they welcomed in the 1-2-1 Canton Lady Bulldogs? As the match got underway under gray and rainy conditions, Canton was able to seize the early momentum. Just under three and a half minutes in, Canton senior Riley Duceric sends the corner kick right in front of the goal mouth, where junior Sarah Collins is able to head it past Olivia Marshall to give the visitors a 1-0 lead. A little over 12 minutes in, we see some nice footwork from sophomore Juliana France before she sends a crisp pass upfield, where senior forward Leanne Kibbe was able to get a step on the defense. She'd release a quick shot, but it would be wide to the right of the Canton net. Moments later, Milford would be awarded the corner kick where Madeline Boyle would look to find Maggie Boyle, but the senior captain could not settle it. Eventually, Captain Rachel LeBlanc would blast it toward net from long range, but the shot attempt would be wide, keeping Milford off the scoreboard. After the missed chances on offense for Milford, Canton would go back to work against Marshall. Milford tries for the clear, but Kendra Farrelly is able to keep it in. The ball then finds its way to Riley Duceric, who sends it ahead to freshman Olivia Rodman. Rodman would send the centering pass on to fellow freshman Eliza Delatizia, who would tuck it under the crossbar, doubling the Canton lead to 2 to nothing. After seeing his team fall into a multi-goal deficit, Coach Maste would call for a timeout, and his message to the team would yield positive results. With a little over 18 minutes remaining in the first half, Milford would have another corner kick chance. This time, Madeline Boyle would send it high in toward net, where Juliana France would head it in just inside the upper left corner of the net to cut the deficit to 2-1. Just over two minutes later, Milford would create another prime scoring opportunity. Again, it ended up being Juliana France who netted the goal, but Kibbe gave Milford that scoring opportunity. And now a good pass up ahead. Here's Boyle trying to beat the keeper, and it's in. A great pass up the middle for Milford, right on target to Maggie Boyle, and the captain does the rest. And two quick goals for Milford ties this game up. It was Hannah Martin with the pass that sprung Maggie Boyle, and Milford would erase the early two-goal deficit to tie the game up at two. The score would stay the same as the teams broke for the intermission. But once the second half began, the Milford offense was ready to pick up where they left off. Just joining us, Juliana France and Maggie Boyle with the goal scored on the Milford side after Milford trailed this game 2 to nothing early. And this ball rolling free and an easy opportunity for Juliana France. And she's able to net it for the go-ahead goal and Milford takes the lead. Taking a second look at that play, watch Maggie Boyle refuse to give up on the play. She gains good body position on her defender and just barely keeps the ball in bounds before delivering a perfect centering pass to Juliana France, who walks away with her second goal of the game to give the Lady Hawks a 3-2 lead. Milford would see multiple chances to add to their lead from there. First it was Leanne Kibbe whose shot would drift just high over the net. Then later in the period, a nice header forward by Ashley Starks would eventually lead to a solid look on net for Hannah Martin, but her shot attempt would be just offline and we'd head into the later stages of this one with the Hawks holding on to just a one goal lead. Finally, after seeing few scoring opportunities since taking the early lead, watch freshman Olivia Rodman get this play started for Canton. Morgan McCabe then accelerates past both Madeline Boyle and Rachel LeBlanc. She releases a shot that would bounce off the right post and in to tie the game up with less than 10 minutes to play. That would prove to be the final goal scored on the day. It was a very hard fought back and forth matchup between these two Davenport foes, but it would ultimately end in a 3-3 draw.
coming up on Saturday thanks to Yanks is sponsoring a seminar titled Refuse to Be a Victim. The seminar teaches easy to understand methods to increase awareness and prevent criminal confrontation. The seminar is being held this Saturday, September 23rd at the Italian American Veterans Hall from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. There is still time to register for the event. For more information or to register, log on to thankstoyanks.org. On Monday, the Greenleaf Garden Club will lead off their 2017-18 fall season with an event titled Horticulture Highlights. Noted horticulturalist Joan Butler will lead the presentation, which will be held at the Senior Center on Monday, September 25th. Refreshments will be served at 6.30 and the program will begin at 7 p.m. For more information, you can send an email to greenleafgardenclub at gmail.com. And coming up on Tuesday, the Town of Milford will be holding a special town meeting. The lone agenda item for this special town meeting will be to decide whether the town should move forward with plans to purchase the Milford Water Company. The town meeting is being held inside Upper Town Hall on Tuesday, September 26th, beginning at 7 p.m. For more information, visit the new town website, milfordma.gov. Next week, Milford will once again have a major decision to make. The town is hosting a special town meeting to decide whether or not to move forward with the purchase of the Milford Water Company. We encourage all town meeting members to attend. For those of you in the community who cannot attend in person, Milford TV will be providing live coverage. So if you cannot make it to Town Hall on Tuesday, just turn on Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 38 for live coverage beginning at 7 p.m. That is all we have for you this week. Thank you, as always, for joining us. And from all of us here at Milford TV, this is Tim Coet saying have a great week. So long, everybody.